So let's start by discussing uh, what we think about parcel delivery and how landscape might look like in 2030, maybe after. So mm -hmm. as an expert and person who works a lot with different logistics and supply chain companies, so what do you see as a um, big change between now, 2022, 2023, and I was five years ago? And what will be a big shift for next five years? I think the, okay, um, comparing with the previous five years, I think the shift was quite big. Um, the first idea which crossed my mind was about um, real-time route optimization and all these uh, things to, um, to to provide ETA uh, to your clients uh, to be uh, max to, to provide maximum visibility and predictability to the clients uh, and uh, the second I would say topic was optimization of how to let's say um, uh, deliver more deliver faster deliver uh, more accurate uh, with the help of some technologies I know um, predictive um, solutions uh, and things like that um, yes I think uh, the last five years was the um, the, the flourishing the, the style of data and everything connected to it I think before uh, those five years it was blockchain the the, the hottest topic uh, the last five years it's more let's say data uh, and the funny thing is um, not so funny but i'm uh, looking forward to some new things uh, new projects uh, this year i think months ago something something uh, mars and ibm has uh, have closed uh, there was a quite big uh, uh, blockchain project uh, for uh, container shipment uh, the idea was to connect uh, let's say the Shippers, the um, um, manufacturers, the uh, those who uh, wait, the, the clients, uh, and uh, uh, to have it in one platform and have all the data inside to ease up uh, customs clearance and all the stuff. Um, and uh, let's say the project uh, has closed because let's say if no commercial. Um, positive things uh, but I think the idea was quite cool and uh, I'm looking forward to something new here uh, because it is it is quite interesting um, from the parcel delivery there was also let's say maybe the last during the last five years we didn't care a lot um, about let's say the clients so it was a bit more um, the the the, um, the, uh, the manufacturer the um the shops uh world so uh we as a clients we need to um go somewhere pick pick up somewhere something and uh, uh wait for a courier and things like that and now uh the trends i would say definitely changed changed a lot and now it is more that you need to put um uh, your kiosk, your pickup location somewhere on a way, uh, on my way, uh, or make it comfortable for me to uh, pick up my, I don't know, delivery parcel. And uh, um, so, or for the courier that uh, I want to change the location when um, I want to um, receive it and uh, things like that. Yeah, so this basically everything about like speed and comfort and something like that. Mm -hmm. But for example, if I am a retailer who's producing mm -hmm. some goods, how should I approach this challenge? Because a lot of people nowadays, I, me personally, I expect my clothes to be delivered next day. And I want my food in 20 minutes and I want something else like so fast. But as a retailer, it could be very challenging. Yes, I can put probably pickup points, um, mm -hmm. use some other third party services, something like that. But from technological standpoint, what should I implement? How should I approach and how for me to satisfy my customers like on a different level? Mm -hmm. 
I would say that we need to, let's say, to to look uh, for different retailers, so let's say different um, areas uh, of retail and different uh, angle and perspective. Uh, for example, you mentioned uh, 20 minutes food uh, and things like that. Um, I, I I see several trends. So first trend is uh, let's say for <clears throat> for for us for for business people to uh, to get out of the office, uh, grab some food, and uh, uh, jump back. This is the main goal. And uh, there are projects and uh, solutions that uh, you don't even need uh, post. Uh, you just need your app. You scan mm-hmm. those sandwiches and some milk or whatever you bought, uh, bananas, uh, and you leave the store. So it is fast, it is convenient, and it is on a go. Uh, from the food delivery, you know, I think that it is quite boring to have this, I need everything in 20 minutes. Uh, maybe... Uh, because it, purely <laughs> the thing is now it is not the speed, but it is, it is, I need some, I, for example, um, with all these, um, so um, we've been discussing these smart homes uh, for ages, uh, but mm-hmm. I, I'm fine that my fridge knows that I, uh, I am out of milk or eggs and uh, it needs to order it. I also find if my, let's say, garbage collector knows that I throw something there, which is, let's say, out of um, expiry date, and um, I, I was not able, let's say, I I spent my money for nothing. And uh, this type of thing, I don't know, picking a menu and saying, okay, I want to cook for a week if I'm a cooker or something, then it is one thing. So it is. it should be, again, about the comfort. It, it should be something cooler and uh, let's say mm, everybody provides this uh, 15 20 minutes but now it is i i totally agree for example i want to cook something but i'm out of okay again milk uh, flour whatever and for one item yes i'm happy to have it in 10 minutes um for coming to technology and groceries uh, i think that all these self-driving cars and some kind of robots, uh, self-driving robots uh, would help us. Uh, and there are many uh, solutions uh, in uh, US, in UK, in uh, Middle East, and, uh, nice and fancy. And uh, we'll, we'll be getting used to, to, um, to such things. Um, thinking from other uh, areas, okay, fashion, yes, um, I think that uh, quite importantly, this uh, to introduce this uh, Bopis Boris type of thing. So um, buy online, peer return in store. So you feel safe. If I don't like it, I can uh, return it faster. I, and um, on the other hand, okay, if I have some kind of the um, venue today, uh, I want the same day delivery. Otherwise, we can wait. So I'm not a big fan of that everything should be one day, uh, 20 minutes, uh, things like that. So you're super skeptical for companies actually invest a lot of money and uh, implement some kind of software or optimization f- to deliver right away? You're more about like planning and prioritizing what would be important for your business and how for me as a business to understand that my customers wouldn't go uh, from me, uh, the one who delivers, I don't know, T-shirts the next day, wouldn't go to someone who delivers T-shirts like in two hours. Or it's just extremely minor thing and customers doesn't care at all. Um, this is a very good question. Um... And uh, there are technologies which could help, let's say, retailers. First of all, I would uh, recommend to consider this type of um, customer data platform where you grab, collect all the information about your um, clients, customers, uh, uh, their uh, marketing information, campaigns, uh, external data, some influencers and things Mm -hmm. like that. And based on this, uh, let's say golden source, uh, you're trying to uh, build some hypothesis, uh, predict uh, demand, uh, some um, new products. Um, and uh, this, uh, I'll say, this type of things, for me, um, 
it is more important to try different things fast and fail fast and all these things rather than say, okay, we will be delivering T-shirts in 20 minutes. That will be our main um, main slogan, main, main module for uh, yeah. 2023. This is... So, uh, mm, A-B test, right? So simple. Uh, yep, simple. Okay, I'm, and maybe I'm too skeptical. And uh, again, you need maybe. to uh, to to split uh, those, let's say, um, generation Z, generation oh, uh, okay. Y, generation all these uh, um, millennials. Thought, yeah, baby yeah, boomers. Thank you, thank you. Yes, sure. yes. Uh, I'm millennials, if I'm not mistaken, but late millennials, uh, millennial, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, and uh, let's say to, to compare, for example, I live in Cyprus and they order coffee um, through a vault of foodie delivery. And for me, it's like, a, pff, I want coffee right from the machine. I don't want a guy, even though it is just five, 10 minutes. But for me, it is better to drive those five, 10 minutes and have the best coffee from barista rather than, but uh, the, the, the attitude, the historical reasons, things like that, could matter and different regions, different countries, uh, you need, we need to adapt. Well, I'm and Gen Z and I'm ordering coffee <laughs> via app <laughs> because I'm lazy to go somewhere. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Um, uh, coming back to the, let's say, if, if you need it fast or not fast, yes, let's say to, to interact. One of the topics uh, which I think the very important for the retailers, for, for every kind of company uh, working with the, let's say, B2C uh, or even B2B market, okay, talking about B2C is uh, the uh, ability to, to interact with your client, whether it is social media, but social media, okay, it, it should be something truly direct, uh, an app, I don't know, messenger, something, then you can get uh, pure, uh, clear information uh, of what is wrong, what is right, and then you can measure, you can um, introduce these D2C type of things and try it there, you can um, get uh, fast feedback. You can broadcast some marketing campaign and try this A, B type of things. You can at least count and understand who are your clients, whether uh, boring, bored millennials or cool uh, Gen Z um, young people to yeah. who expect coffee uh, in two minutes and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, actually, I was I was curious all the time. I have a personal problem that I go to some store, I like this store, or I buy there like almost every week, or I buy somewhere mm -hmm. once per six months, and they always uh, kind of force me to download their app, and I'm a bit annoyed about it. So, and sometimes when I go there, like uh, it's like general store, I walk every day. I have discounts, I have new offers, something like that. And I know that I'm going to use it because I go there every day. But there are some stores I don't go every day. And whether, like, for me as a customer, it's a bit challenging and annoying because I have, like, my storage filled with all this, like, apps. I don't know whether I'm going to use it or not. But from perspective of business, it's just really important to uh, get your customer uh, and get all the, like, data and communicate. How would you approach the solution would you recommend every company to create an app to communicate with the customers or maybe there are some other options or like at least social media or something like that mm -hmm. for sure for sure social media um is one of the uh, channels apps um you need to to understand uh, let's say why uh you and me, we need uh, that app in our mobile. Um, the, the main goal, let's see, we did a project for one CPG client uh, specifically to have this, uh, uh, to create this uh, communication channel and um, get those first feedbacks and things like that. Uh, but uh, let's say the idea beneath it was first, let's say, to attract them by a new loyalty lottery type of things. So you scan, you... Uh, check that it is um, the um, original product, and uh, you you 
let's say you you bought a true uh, version of it uh, and uh, the next thing it was let's say that uh, educational part so uh, they educated through videos through some some things how say how to use this product how to better um, help you to support you so it was some let's say value uh, created for uh, their clients and uh, um uh, finally, it was also the communication channel. So if they are not happy, uh, they could easily write uh, a complaint or something, question, and stuff like that. And last but not least, uh, they build a map uh, to see where uh, their products uh, uh, have been registered because they're working through the network of, uh, let's say, retailers, uh, uh, suppliers. So they don't have this uh, D2C D2 direct-to-consumer model yet at least and mm -hmm. they even didn't know where their products so where their uh, their audience uh is so who they are and stuff like that um another thing uh is uh, a bit apart from um an app is let's say to uh, to empower um um employees uh, with some tool, with some app, with some uh, computer vision uh, solutions uh, to uh, to know uh, your clients uh, in the face. So yes, you need a consent, you need all these GDPR agreements, things like that. But mm -hmm. in general, if you, uh, if client agreed uh, to, to, to share a photo or get it from social media or something, okay, GDPR for sure. Uh, but then when the person enters your store, uh, shop assistant already knows the whole, uh, let's say, the whole transaction history and everything is there and you can recommend immediately. You can uh, contact personally, ask something and uh, try different things. Uh, so there are many ways uh, how to do things. Last but not least, it is quite interesting and uh, I would say it is quite booming nowadays, all these VR, AR, Metaverse. Yeah. Um, yes. And there are many projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are many projects of, um, let's say, combining Metaverse and, uh, uh, let's say, virtual reality and uh, um, physical stores. So Nike has been doing that. Are there, so you can, there are, there are many ways and, uh, let's say, the, the, the sky is the limit of your imagination and what you can do there. Introduce your labels uh, in some game, uh, introduce new products there, uh, you know, get some uh, virtual money to, to buy some real stuff. So there are, you, there are many ways how to bring um, clients uh, and improve your revenue. Uh, however, yes, again, AB is something. You need to be fast. Uh, in doing something that you try, I would say that the, one of the best things is to try different things, try a lot, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, see how it works. Yeah, I actually I, I really like. Add, sorry. Yeah, no, I no, actually yeah. remembered IKEA and the way they were doing because I had their app, and in different countries, it like the experience is super different because they have different discounts. But I remember when I, first of all, I can go to my home and I uh, use their VR just to AR uh, and just uh, put the furniture there. And the second mm -hmm. part, when I go to the store, they had like some uh, Christmas thing and you can actually uh, find a, a cartoon character in the app and put it on on the chair or put it on the bed. And I remember all the kids were running around and uh, playing with this app. So that was a very interesting part of gamification. And second is for grocery. We have it uh, here. So we uh, sell like, um, for example, Hanes ketchup and uh, some kind of... Uh, mm -hmm mayonnaise and all the things so when people buy it they scan and they have like gamification like that's the story for kids and then you buy books special books in the stores and then you go all over the places and you scan you collect some points and then you go back and you play in the store in a way because you have to uh, have all these riddles solved or you have some puzzles for kids so people at the end buy a lot of stuff they don't really need but it's so interesting and fun and especially before mm -hmm. new year or before some major celebration 
it's fantastic. But you mentioned about earlier about like returns. That is a very painful topic for everyone. And for example, I do know that for for fashion retailers, it's more or less handled. They know that they have pickup stores, they have the original stores, people can go back there. But what about like other other directions? For example, if I'm selling huge furniture, so because furniture has to be delivered and somehow it has to be picked up and uh, get to the warehouse back or something like that. How to manage this process? And for grocery, I never heard a nice case when people can actually return grocery because the only thing that I can do in my app when I order food is just to uh, create a picture. But if it's something tastes bad or something, I cannot show it on the picture and I'm not sure whether they will return my money or not. So how to handle this? Mm -hmm. You know, with the let's say with grocery returns, uh, I also haven't uh, seen any better options rather than complaining in app. And in most cases, you get a refund with some let's say virtual bonuses or something that you can the next um, um, during the next order uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Regarding the smell and uh, stuff like, I think that uh, for them, let's say for grocery. It is more the reputational uh, reputation question, and it is easier to return, I don't know, uh, money for you for one can of something, I don't know, or mm -hmm. some, um, uh, and to check, um, let's say, to, to double check that, yes, so let's say all this party is fine, just uh, one item, something went wrong, and we don't know why, but in general, we are safe. Um, okay. This is important, and... Uh, I'd say it is also, um, but uh, mm, mm, for for grocery, mm, no one uh, one thing which I, I would say uh, I found unfair was uh, when mm, it was connected with the say, food delivery and grocery. Uh, they've been sending me this, those uh, refund coupons via SMS. And mm -hmm. for sure, I forgot all of them uh, when I was ordering next time. So it is a bit like, a, come on, it should be in an, in an app because otherwise yeah. you're just, uh, let's say, uh, you're playing with me that uh, I will definitely forget any who checks SMS, uh, I don't know, and there are see, hundreds of them and uh, things like that. Yeah. With the furniture, uh, it's quite interesting. <clears throat> First... Yes, IKEA is also second. Uh, the huge transformation with all these furniture stores, COVID uh, case, when they, um, as you mentioned, with the gamification, they introduce uh, let's say new way how to uh, what to do on this huge uh, uh, let's say area of the uh, furniture store where nobody now goes. Uh, and to introduce some coffee shops, some uh, entertainment for kids, uh, even some <clears throat> climbing facilities because there is an indoor climbing facility, so some sports things. So it is <clears throat> it is still the, the idea to attract people there and um, uh, for them to interact uh, online and uh, um, try and buy them. From the return perspective, <clears throat> My personal view is the best thing is this uh, real-time root optimization and uh, um, being flexible, having your um, 3PL partner or mm -hmm. uh, your, let's say, fleet management uh, uh, TMS solution, let's say, flexible enough for that. I don't know, you're uh, saying, okay, guys, you're just driving and waiting for uh, returns and things like that, or you're just, uh, let's say, um, Building them their route in a way that uh, they they need to collect something. Uh, another question is, let's say the the size. So you need to understand what is uh, at this particular moment in this particular truck, uh, so that they can handle another so far inside without any damage to other items. And um, so. I, I have my experience with mattress and it, it mm -hmm. works pretty well. Let's say it was fast and interesting. And from the um, returns and delivery and the quality of it, I liked it. I think it was in LinkedIn not that long ago. The 
I think it was some Nordic bicycle company. They started to uh, to package, let's say, to uh, to put their bicycles in the boxes of TV screens. It, it looked like a TV, um, and uh, the the quality of delivery improved dramatically. No scratches, no broken parts um, in it. So uh, the creativity works pretty well. Um, as for the yeah. yeah that sounds great i'm just everything you described uh first of all sounds complicated a bit uh second of uh, i'm like it sounds expensive like for me as a company it would be hard to optimize pricing to the level uh to be really profitable so how would i handle that like i have to somehow understand uh, what will be the price for delivery and uh, I will have price like to deliver to somewhere to the post or somewhere to someone's apartment and then there's another part like returns so I have to understand whether I'll charge person to get returns how much should this process could cost and something like that how should <clears throat> I play with pricing I don't understand that you would say a b tested but like at the beginning how to actually handle this money wise mm. Mm. Hard, you know, I know. <laughs> yes, challenging <it's> hard. <laughs> for sure for sure uh, the first idea uh, just to screen scrap uh, what your competitors are doing and compare and see where we are uh, and uh, what shall we do Another thing is that, again, to introduce gamification that nobody likes when the price increases for some product, mm -hmm. but you can increase for something, not for the return, uh, because return, it's, it's let's say, the, the feeling of safety the, that uh, if you don't like it, you can easily return. But for, let's say, for some service, some maintenance, stuff like that. So I think that it is part of the hidden cost of the return. And... Uh, I would say that in general, it is not that uh, expensive to try new things. Uh, I think that the most tough and challenging is uh, to, uh, to amend to adjust the business processes, operations uh, around because mm -hmm. it is people uh, and uh, you need to say that everybody understands and uh, to teach a bit new things and to adapt and to adopt and to all these uh, type of um, things and uh, here is let's say the complexity from the technology perspective no it is it mm -hmm. is quite, uh, let's say from you can start uh, quick and dirty uh, you need fancy something scalable and uh, stuff like that you can start in one region with one store with one something and then uh, let's say to, to, to give it a try and uh, things like that again um, let's say if you promise that the returns uh, will be, um, let's say, uh, when uh, the, somebody is passing by, then let's say, okay, it is, let's say, it is not a big uh, thing, uh, even though it is hard to predict. Uh, let's say, I would also recommend not to stick so the collection will be from nine till two, please mm -hmm. stay at home and stuff like that. Uh, I know messengers calls. Uh, hey, uh, I'll be passing in fifteen minutes. Are you at home? Yes. No. Okay. Next time. Next time. Something like that. Then I don't know. In a week. Okay. Let's schedule. We we didn't have chance to uh, to arrange it uh, in a um, easy manner. Win win for everybody. Then okay, we will do something. So um, there are many ways. Uh, let's see how to do things. Maybe. Um, let's say the the person is uh, uh, is happy to bring that part of furniture to the store by uh, by themselves, like it was in mm -hmm. IKEA. Uh, uh, it is in IKEA, and uh, I think they give you some vouchers or coupons for some new purchases and things like that. And uh, um, talking about sustainability and uh, moving in that way with the furniture, if you um, there was a nice campaign, by the way. We're talking a lot about IKEA. Um, 
uh, that uh, to give a second life uh, for the furniture. So uh, oh, if yeah. it is a good, uh, yes, it's a good quality for the sustainability, I'm absolutely fine, let's say, if, if the bookshelf is not, let's say, I uh, let's say top new. Okay, if if it looks good, I'm fine. I don't uh, barely need uh, everything. Let's say top notch, brandly uh, new. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we should consider sustainability and a lot of care about it. Yes, actually about sustainability, I was uh, reading an article <laughs> about. Uh, I don't remember the name of the brand, but it was a Polish company, and they operate all over European Union. And what they have uh, come up with <clears throat> is that they buy out the goods they sell because they realize that a lot of people actually sell their furniture on Oilix or any other website, and they're losing money. And they have decided that they have a lot of warehouses and a lot of people who know how to do furniture. So the thing is that you can return uh like a sofa anytime you want we will pay you small fee like 100 bucks something of course not the full amount and we will we will pick it up we'll bring it to our warehouse we update it a bit we'll clean it and we'll sell it another thing so they have another marketplace for these things to happen like it's fantastic and generally about sustainability like we have a lot of laws implemented in the us in the european union and so many countries and people worried about it a lot so what would be future trends because i know some uh, some companies go for green logistics, but it's, mm -hmm. it looks like complicated. And a lot of companies just say, oh, yeah, we're going green, but do nothing, uh, to be <laughs> honest. Yeah, so <clears throat> what, what would be your advice and what would be best trends to implement sustainability-wise to actually become greener and help our planet? Mm -hmm. What I see, what I saw at least in two projects uh, which we are working on is that, uh, uh, and I think it is a good um, starting point, is to understand if you truly, let's say, if you're not like, uh, pretending uh, that you're green, but you're truly thinking of uh, of your, let's say, <clears throat> carbon emissions and all this um, mm -hmm. stuff, uh, to understand uh, where you are. And I would say European uh, new regulations, I think they started at least in Germany, this year, this February, or something <clears throat> they, uh, they 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 cover the whole supply chain. So from the say the the quality of manufacturing, the uh, the the sources of raw materials and things like that. And um, you truly need to be the to build uh, your um, data management platform to to pick and collect. Uh, first of all, to be compliant with these new regulations to provide these reports, and then I think it is very nice. <clears throat> point to to start and to understand. Okay, here's what we have. Where can we improve? Uh, and uh, let's say step by step, uh, do things. Um, big names like I know Google, uh, others, uh, cloud providers. They they are let's see, they're paying a lot of attention around this, and I think this is uh, this is good. And, uh, <clears throat> But again, the starting point is let's say let's say data platform and uh, understand because just marketing campaigns it's a bit yeah um, lame. Too less. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I, I do agree with you. Like literally everything I read <clears> about <throat> it and the company's work is based on data and what suppliers you work with and whether you can check whether they're green or not and how would you implement the strategy. But I think one way or another in 10 years, whole world will be forced in a lot of ways to go sustainable and we'll see a lot of companies and features for software that would actually help companies to make this process more smooth yeah yeah so Agreed. thank you i Agreed. think it's uh, it was extremely interesting and i'm very super excited about our next grocery th stuff yeah and uh, thanks a lot i think uh, we will talk next year already 